Hello and welcome to Don't Break the Bank. I'm your host, Taddy. And I'm your other host, Ben. Don't Break the Bank is all about saving money, but still having those luxuries that we just can't live without. Whether you're a struggling student or a wannabe billionaire, these tips will save you that sweet, sweet change. Ben, as a student yourself, how do you save that sweet, sweet change? Well, to save money, you've got to look around where you're going and try and find the cheapest price that you can. But even nowadays, you don't even have to do that because you've got apps like Unidays that will do the searching for you. And all you've got to do is hit the buy button, really. There's so many ways to save money, especially when you're a student. And this is what Don't Break the Bank is all about. Yeah, you're right, Taddy. Don't Break the Bank is all about spreading knowledge for people who have just finished sixth form or college and are pursuing into further education. The media has always portrayed the image of students being broke, but we've been doing some research of our own to break this idea, and honestly, the facts don't sound that surprising. Did you know that students spend an average of £790 a month, 124 just on food, 64 on social, and 34 on clothing? Alongside this, an average rent is £370 a month. This doesn't give students the opportunity to save any money. That is a lot of money, considering most students tend to rely on student loans or even sometimes their parents as a source of income. I think maybe it's because one in four students admit to not budgeting or planning their expenses. Students spend a lot of money on nights out, clothes and especially food. They all fall into that trap of getting that cheeky Nando's or a kebab after a long night out. Well, I'm not the best cook, so I don't really do my own cooking at home, but I bet if you did, it would save you a lot of money. It really does, and that's why we sent out Zach to go on a little shopping trip and make a meal of only just five pounds. Lunch with Zach! Hi, I'm Zach Holroyd, and today I'm going to be showing you how to cook a gourmet meal for five pounds. I'm going to be whipping up a lamb steak with red wine sauce with a side of mashed potatoes and asparagus. Hey guys, where does the asparagus go for a few drinks? The salad bar. Right, let's go get the ingredients. New potatoes, final thing. So starting off, we have actually got the lamb steak. This cost us £2.25. We're going to be pan frying this with a little bit of butter. Um, alongside that, as a side, we've got obviously the asparagus. We're going to be boiling that. Um, we've also got some Tesco value new potatoes. These cost 50p, and the asparagus bit actually cost £1, pound, which reduced from £1.80. Um, the mashed potatoes, well, the potatoes, we're going to be mashing up. Um, and then alongside that, to finish it all off, we've got some red wine sauce that cost us the remainder. So we took a knob of butter and melted it into a frying pan. We then added the lamb steak into the pan and cooked it for roughly three to four minutes either side until it was nicely browned. Finally, we added the red wine sauce into the pan and let the lamb absorb the sauces for about two minutes before draining off the vegetables. That was five pound lunch with Zach. Like there isn't anything more lovely than a home cooked meal and it's even better when you don't have to break the bank. Yeah, that's better because when you're at home, do you like cook your own meals or do you like normally just make I someone else do? I actually do a lot of cooking and I find that it's quite, it's cheaper to actually meal prep so that you don't like fall into the trap of like grabbing something quickly to eat like when you're out because you already have like a meal prep for the when you get home. Yeah. What do you tend to do? I normally just get like ready meals or something like that because oh. it just saves so They're much time. It's so expensive. Like they <laughs> make you think, oh, it's five pounds. But if you carry on like spending five pounds every day, it actually adds up. Well, they're not exactly five pounds, but they are more expensive. But it's sometimes people value their time over money, which is something as a student, which they've got to try and balance out really. Okay. But there's one thing we can all agree on. It's that we do love to save money on the, like luxuries and things like that. So for example, you've got gaming and online entertainment. That's why we sent out Alex to find the most cost-effective way to game. This segment is called Don't Play With My Money. No, Ben, it's more like don't play with my money. 1.6 billion people live on planet Earth and 1.8 of those are gamers or participate in the gaming industry in some way or another. That is almost a quarter of the world's population that enjoy online and single player games. The only problem is that today's newest 
and most recently released games have a price of around £50 or more on average. Not only that, but as console and PC technology is increasingly getting better in development, the price of those also rise every year. So to find out more about gaming on a budget, so to speak, I've asked someone who thinks that they can give us the answer that we are looking for. When it comes to consoles, everything's all kind of put together, um, and people, well, players, don't necessarily use what goes into that machine. Um, but then the games are a lot more expensive anyway, and so I think partly the costs are down so that people can afford those games instead. So um, they don't have to worry about computers? Yes, um, and in terms of upgrades, um, they can do that through online updates as well. And oh, so, really? Yeah, so with particular consoles, um, you would have regular updates to say, you know, there's a new update on, and then you just download it. Oh, and yeah. So costs are kind of left that low because of that reason, that it is constantly updating. You don't have to add a new graphics card or anything to make it better yeah. or anything like that. But then they also have, like those particular companies will then have new consoles coming out. So obviously with a PlayStation 4, but then there's also a PlayStation 4 Pro. Yeah. If you wanted um, upgraded um, graphics or that sort of stuff. PCs are becoming more variable in terms of how much you would like to spend and obviously the more you spend, the better you get. What's even better is that you can choose when you want to put your money into a computer. If you want better graphics, you'll grade your graphics parts. If you want a faster computer, it would be the processing power. And if you're someone that never deletes anything and chooses to keep it all in case the bad does happen, you can put more of your money from a measly 250 gigabyte up to a massive 24 terabytes hard drive or a 16 terabyte solid state drive. Um, I think, I'm not a PC gamer, okay, however, um, I think it probably ranges between 500 and above in terms of pounds. Um, but then again, it just depends on the sort of experience that you want. So a lot of people do focus on the graphics and people always say graphics on the PC is so much better than consoles um, and so when it comes down to that, that would be one of the things that I think um, is a factor in why choosing a PC exclusive to PC as well and I think that's another reason why people might go to PCs as, as well. Hello. Um, when it comes to particular platforms, I do think that it depends on what people want from a gaming console or a PC. So, um, you know, if there's any particular ga exclusive games, then go with that platform. Um, if friends is also a factor as well. Yeah. You know, um, if all of your friends are on PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One or PC, people will tend to stick with what their friends are on as well. Um, and then obviously I, for me the big factor is where are the best games um, and so if I feel that the PC has a particular game that I really want to play then yeah I will buff up my PC just so I can play it but luckily for me most of my games are kind of console exclusives Is it me but I'd feel like a pro at saving money and even a gamer after that but maybe after the show we can play a quick game of Fortnite. <laughs> Meet me at Tilted Towers then. But whilst we're talking about Fortnite, that's a great way for gamers to save money. Fortnite is a free to download survival game. You can play by yourself or play with your friends. It's a great night in and you don't need to break the bank to play it. It's even available on most platforms and even on mobile phones so you don't have to buy a console to play it. Yeah, however, there are in-app purchases so don't purchase too many V-Books. If you do, then it wouldn't really save you money at all. I hate to admit it, but I have bought a couple of Lives and Candy Crush a few times myself then. Yeah, since I learned all that information, I'll make sure that I'm not playing with my money the next time I make a game purchase. And to be fair, if you become a professional gamer out of that, then you could easily make your money back. Well, rather than becoming a professional gamer, I would rather prefer to play, wear nice clothes and eat fancy meals. That sounds like a dream job, though. Yeah, but is that really a genuine job? Guess not. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we have someone who does something similar in the studio. She's a model and an art student at Birmingham University, so can we have a big round of applause for our guest today, Faye. So thank you for coming. 
you for joining us today, Shane. Thank you so much for having me again, Paddy yeah. and Ben. So we've invited you on the show to help us and the audience see how you how we can make better choices on style without like overspending. And we're going to do that by playing a game, if you'd allow us, which is called Guess the Look. So basically, you show us an item of clothing, and me and Ben will guess how much the item of clothing is on our whiteboards, and then you'll reveal to us the real price. Okay, that's fine. I'll start off with the first item, which is a denim shirt. Really good for layering. It's from Next. It's got a couple pockets and poppers. How much do you guys think this will cost? Was it like a full price, or was it like on a sale? It was full price. It was full price. So it's a denim top. From next. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I've guessed ten pounds. I've guessed thirty. Actually, guys, it's twenty-five pounds. Twenty-five. That's quite good. Next is like tends to be quite pricey as well. Yeah, definitely. But it's at the same time, it's a really good basic and um, staple in a wardrobe because you can layer it over everything, and it's also unisex. And people tend to do like this retrend that I've been seeing where they tie it around their waist. So, like, you can have, like, a different top underneath and it also, like, gives a different look to your outfit. Yeah, exactly, Teddy. And you can pop it on when it gets a bit cooler at night and you can dress it up, make it look edgy, make it look um, more formal, more casual. It's just how you use one item can be so versatile just depending on how you wear it. Um, the second item I'm going to be talking about is a bright satin bomber. It's from Pretty Little Thing and it's... Just a nice zip up hoodie, quite light, quite airy, breathable. How much do you guys think this is? Okay. I guess fifty pounds. I'm sticking it cheap again and going twelve pounds. <laughs> yeah, Ben is really close. It is fifteen pounds. It's nice, it's easy, breathy, you just pop it on and you're ready to go. And it's a nice touch of colour in the warmer months and it looks great on any skin tone. But I feel like because it's so bright, you would have to wear like just like like a black or a white underneath or something because it brings so much attention and I feel like wearing something else, like would it take away from the whole like jacket itself? Um, not really because it depends on your own style. You can pair it with something darker, you can pair it with something brighter, you can wear it as well, you can wear it quite casual, you can wear it quite formal, you can wear it with a nice shirt and a pair of trousers, you can wear it with just a casual vest top and some shorts, just depends on the occasion, how you want to wear it. You can wear it quite loud or quite um, muted. It's just up to you. Yeah, so for the clothes that you showed us here, are they just like for the summer months or are they for all year round? They're for all year round, really, because I believe in layering. It saves you a lot of money. You can pop a hoodie or a jumper under everything and make it look different for the different months. Summer, you can wear something quite light underneath. Winter times, you can layer and keep yourself warmer. Just depends. Okay, so what's the next item of clothing? The next item of clothing is this trench coat. It's from a small brand called Small Like, and it's got a nice pop of colour on the inside, a pink um, lining. It's just a nice trench coat, simple, staple for a wardrobe. Okay, okay so because it's a trench coat, I feel like it's going to be a bit pricier because trench coats don't tend to be cheap. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick with... Uh, £35. I'm sticking it cheap again and going 15 <laughs> Yeah, Ben's <laughs> right again. It's £15. Oh it's God. just nice because it's from a really small brand. So, so is that the full price for it or was that in a sale? Yeah, that's the, full bra uh, that's the full price because it's from a smaller brand, not well-known brand. So they're trying to get their name out there. And that's really good if you guys look into like not just what's on your high street, like really research and look into where you're buying from. You can really come up on a bargain, especially because from smaller brands, they tend to start off quite small and they have more affordable items. So what you're saying is if you was at home wanting to recreate looks similar to what you're showing us today, mm -hmm. it makes more sense to go to like smaller starting off businesses than to go to higher end ones because they will charge a cheaper price. Yeah, definitely. And have a look online as well. Online is the basically the biggest helper. The high street is great, but it saves a lot more time to just look online and find brands that are starting out just with small stocks and yeah. That's pretty much it. But doesn't okay. it face a problem? Because I feel like if you look for starting brands, they tend they can't really like they tend to just change up the look a little bit, and then it takes away from what you initially wanted. Yeah, definitely. But it's all in exploring, and I think my personal style has changed a lot. It's same with any company, same with every individual. Your personal style tends to change within the year, within a couple of months, and depending on the trends as well, they go along with the trends. It's just how things tend to work. Yeah, so so as Taddy was saying a minute ago, 
how about recreating looks? Is can it work for both genders? Like, can males wear females clothes, and can females wear males clothes? For I'm def I definitely believe that anybody can wear whatever they want to wear. But I feel like all these items are so simple and just basic. They can work for any person or any gender. If you were interested in a bright coloured bomber, if you're not really into the bright colour, you can choose another colour and also wear it however you feel you want to wear it. Like the denim shirt also works for men as well. So it's just depending on you and your personal style, but it's all about saving money and tailoring it everything to your personal style also. Yeah, so what you're saying is clothing is like multi-purpose, there's different ways that you can wear it. Definitely, and that's really what saves you money. Instead of okay. going out and buying several items, you can buy the one thing and just mix and match, DIY, swap this in out, wear it a different way, be resourceful, be creative, and make things work for you, basically. Okay. The way you're dressed today looks so creative. Could you like explain to us and the viewers how you went about recreating the look? Basically, I'm really into 90s fashion. That's really what inspires me. And I tend to buy my clothes from charity shops, um, markets, from, from thrift vintage stores, because I feel like that's where you get the best bargain. For instance, these jeans, these jean, denim jean um, shorts, they're Calvin Klein and they cost me two pounds, believe it or not. And so that you get the really good quality for a cheap price because it's, it's not considered what's in fashion at the minute. And this Hawaiian top, cost me for my local charity three pounds and a pair of sandals were basically free because my sister was getting rid of them so this outfit really cost me five pounds and my jewelry is from pretty little things which cost me eight pounds i believe so it's just all about finding things here and there and mixing it together to get the overall look and i tend to dress quite unisex because i am a tomboy yeah. so it all just it relates to every kind of person there is it's just pick out what you like what you don't like how you want on on a budget as well. It's anything is possible. Yeah. So you're saying like the two pounds for the shorts and three pounds for the top, but mm -hmm. with cheap clothes, is the quality is normally like left in the background. But does that sort of like defeat the purpose of the clothing being cheap in the first place? Um, I believe yes and no. Depends on how often you believe you want to wear the item. If an item's kind of like a fad trend that's just popping at the minute or is quite quite popular, and you know you're only going to wear it once or twice, it's you can forfeit the quality because you know you're not, it's not going to be a hard wear. But if something that it's a basic in your wardrobe, a staple in your wardrobe, and you know you're going to wear it constantly every day, every other day, like a pair of black jeans or a nice top, white top. So you, it's, it's m it makes more sense to invest that a little bit more just to make that item stretch just a little bit longer. And okay. I know you've got a few um, guests and models to here to show us like a few of their looks. But before they come in, I just wanted to quickly ask you, how would you go about advising someone who wants to shop in charity shops but has this whole like stigma on secondhand clothing? Um, I would say I had that first opinion when I first started because when I went into, when I turned 16, I had like 50 pounds every month and I had to make it stretch. That was including my transport, my lunches, like um, college and everything. So it kind of, I had to sit down with myself and really get over it and get excited about it and really get into the culture of looking and finding stuff. But it's one of those things, it's quite addictive. Once you find the gems, you can't stop. So yeah. just get in there, have a look every other, like, every other weekend, just go with a group of friends and just, just get in there. That's the best advice I can give you. Just pop into your local charity shop. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because yeah. the fact that you found Calvin Klein for only two pounds, that's, that's actually amazing. Definitely is. And I'm um, bringing in one of my models um, <laughs> to show you. So this is a great way to start with a summer look. If you're not really into wearing bright head to toe, you can wear an orange shirt. And this is from ASOS. ASOS is a great brand because they do offer uni days online. Oh yeah which gives you a nice discount. So she's got an orange plain t-shirt, just simple wear. And then she's got a pair of ASOS jeans also and a pair of white trainers, which look great in the sun. They look so bright and so clean. And it just gives the look kind of a casual, but also popping fresh and trendy look. So that like, she has the kind of look that I was talking about with, like with the bright colored bomber jacket. So like when you're wearing something so bright, you have other colors that will just, just like, still bring it out but kind of just like let it shine a bit more and it looks really well especially with the white trainers as well definitely it just gives it a really like she's wearing color but she's not loud and she's not shouting and it looks good i think sabrine looks great today if she would like to give us a turn 
thank you so much. And I'd like to introduce my other model, Anna. Anna's wearing a nice Primark top, nice flowy, breathable top for the summertime and some black Primark jeans. The top is also from Primark and the glasses are also from Primark. So you know this outfit is dead cheap. And her, her, she's got some relaxed, dirty bands on, which everyone has in their wardrobe. That's bang on trend at the minute. And it's something I see a lot on the high street. It's something I see a lot um, on Instagram and online that people wear. So this is just a staple outfit and you can wear it in so many different ways and she looks great. So is there, was there anything like similar similar to what Anna's wearing for like a boy who would want to do the same thing or do, do, can they wear the same things or? Oh, definitely. I feel like a guy can wear like a nice orange yellow shirt and look great. Also the sunglasses can be done, definitely. A pair of black jeans which every guy has in their wardrobe, I know definitely. And a pair of vans. I've seen a lot of guys wearing that. Everyone has a pair of trainers and you can make it look cool and effortless. It's possible for any gender. And you did mention about the trainers being like kind of like rough and edgy. Is that a look as well that people do? Because that can save you a lot of money instead of going out and buying new trainers. You can just wear like the old ones that you already have in your closet. Definitely. I prefer trainers to look a bit old. I just like the look personally. Also, I like a pair of like for white trainers. I do like them a bit fresh and white. But when they do get a bit stained, I feel like it adds more character and more makes it look more worn and more relaxed personally. So I think it looks great. And I think it also looks great on guys and girls. So okay. thank you so much for coming. And thank you for your wonderful models for coming in today yeah. and showing our audiences how to create recreate looks for cheaper prices thank you so yeah, much so for could having we have a round of applause for our anna and have a round of applause for our guest today faye for the she's helped us stay in the fashion and stay on top of trends but without breaking the bank thank you so much so Ben, what did you learn today on Don't Break the Bank? Well I've learned that there's different things out there that I can use to save money instead of just looking around because uni days was mentioned a lot there. Yeah. So that's just a searching for you really, doesn't it? It gives you the money off. So all you've got to do is hit the buy button really on what you want. Exactly. Which is very good. So I've saved a little bit of time, but I'm also saving money at the same time. And you've learnt not to buy ready meals and just <laughs> cook at home. Oh, I think I would learn learn to learn to cook to do that though. I've also learned that instead of just going in and buying something, you can go to like different places and you don't have to just straight away like find something and buy it because you can get it for a cheaper price. Yeah, well, that's something everybody can take away, isn't it? That Yes, you do have to look around for what you want to buy or what you're interested in, but there are things out there that can help you as well. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for here today. It was great having you on the show. Thank you for watching. I've been your host, Taddy. And I've been Ben, and this has been Don't Break the Bank.